Greetings travelers, hobos, rubber tramps, scallywags, Coastal Kev here. How y'all doing here? A January 4th. Beautiful Picayune, Mississippi. And we're checking out these Wranglers. Still got a little tread left on them, 35,000 miles. And uh, they want to turn in a direction southerly. They want to spin to the south. So it's off to our favorite spots in Florida. And we got our all set, ready to go. We're going to get one more trip out of these tires. Last set, I got 48,000 off of them. So Thief's got 35. And where are we going? Well, you know, last year we decided to go out to Arizona beautiful quartzite arizona in january average temperature at night 35 degrees mm, that's not warm enough sorry so we'll go back to old tried and true florida and uh our first stop out of uh, beautiful picayune we'll stop in uh mobile bay there's a, a ferry boat goes across the mouth of the mobile bay uh, I think it costs 10 15 bucks. The uh, ferry ride down there in Galveston was free. Port Aransas was free in Texas. But Florida, or Alabama, I don't know which, going to charge us some money. Also, we're going to stop at uh, Florabama, is a roadhouse on the Florida Alabama line. Uh, bands, food, cocktails on the beach. I passed by it before, but I've never stopped, so we'll stop there and get a t-shirt and a snack. Then it's on down to uh, Tampa. We'll stop in Tampa, as we do. Got a friend there. We do a little chores for him, some fix-ups. And the whole goal of this trip, of course, is to get out of the cold weather. And even Tampa at night can get 45, 43 degrees in January, February. Mm, still not cold enough. So let's go farther south. Let's go to Kokomo. You know where Kokomo is? Well, that's down here in the Keys. It's not really a place. It's not a city or a town or a county. It's Kokomo is a Bermuda, Bahamas. Ooh, I want to take you there, Mama. Key Largo, Montego. That whole area down there is called Kokomo. It's a, it's a mindset, as they say. And the average temperatures in the last couple weeks has been, no oh, 72 at night, 77 in the daytime. That's wonderful. Spend a month down there. I'll also uh, cruise around and try to find, dig up some work. I'd like to get a, a base down there, a couple of homeowners need to fix ups. Go down there and see them every year in January, February. And it puts a little extra jingle in my pocket and... Uh, I enjoy handyman stuff and fixing up these old houses. They make a list. We park in the driveway. We work for a month, and then we travel away. And they'll set up a list for next year. I've uh, got connections like that, of course, here in Picayune. Uh, did some work there in San Antonio, uh, Knoxville in the summer. Got some good customers there. Just roll into town, park the old G20. And we're working. If you can take a month off your three months of heat in the summer and take a month off that frigid cold in the winter, I think that's a good deal. That's all we're good for. We go for a month. Now we have some little fix-ups here in the old G20. You know, you always do your uh, you always do your uh, maintenance, your oil changes, and your transmission filter, and it changes and We'll run into a little thing here called a exhaust leak. And you can see the fine handiwork I did there. That's some muffler tape designed for patching. It's not it's not like um, it's not like muffler wrap, it's muffler tape. A temporary fix, put some wires on it, wrap it around the the hole after I put a soup can in the gap. The one pipe is smaller than the other. Duh. 
should have it welded. I know, I know. So I took me an old soup can, jammed it in there, filled up the gap, covered the hole, and then wrapped it with that tape, put a clamp, a couple wires. It's running smooth. It's running good. And we just got to get about 2,500 more miles out of it. When we get back up here in southwest Mississippi, we'll probably do a, a proper fix on it. And speaking of wraps, you know, uh, Chevy, in all their wisdom, when they designed the G20, just for my consternation, they ran that exhaust pipe across the engine, tie up with this one. Your driver's side comes down, your passenger side crosses underneath the engine right in front of the transmission uh, pan. The transmission pan holds all your transmission fluid. Isn't that a wonderful design? All the heat coming off of that pipe right onto the transmission pan. Mm, not a good idea. So some years ago, I put this muffler wrap on there and it kind of insulates that pipe and takes the temperature down a bit. I've never heard a mechanic say that your transmission fluid is too cold. So even though the G20 has a transmission cooler up in the grill, cooling all that fluid, this has got to help a bit. That hot exhaust coming right off, passing that pan. What were they thinking? I don't know. Anyways, it's working good. Exhaust system working good. Transmission fluid and engine oil. Filters good. And the old Wranglers. Come on, baby. Let's get one more trip out of you. Thousand miles down, thousand miles back. I know you can do it. We get back up here for springtime. We'll we'll get another set. I think uh, four of them uh, installed about 350, 350 bucks. And the last pair I had, I got 48,000 miles off of them, and uh, I, I replace them before they go totally bald, and I do like four sets instead of odd odd tires and whatnot, so uh, we'll get another set of Wranglers, U.S. made, good years, got a nice tread pattern, got the raised white walls, lettering, and who loves them more than... Miss Dottie Jackson, she loves, she loves the Wranglers. You love the Wranglers? She has no idea where we're going. She thinks we're just going to the park today. But she's been watching me load up. I think she's got an idea. Well, anyways, we'll uh, get back on here probably in Mobile Bay for a little uh, ferry ride. And a little uh, a view of Florabama. That old roadhouse down there on the border, Alabama and Florida. Then on into uh, Tampa. You've seen Tampa. Where we'll practice our driving skills. You know they drive crazy down there, but they don't crash. So you get your hands up on the wheel, tighten that seat belt, and brush up on your driving skills. Because they drive fast, crazy, and they don't crash. That's what I'm amazed at. If you could do Tampa... Oh, a month or two of driving Tampa, the city interstates, the side streets, the surface streets. Do a month of that, once a day, two hours a day or something. You take on any city. Houston, Los Angeles. I went back to Los Angeles. It's nothing like Tampa. Now, I will mention this, that it's probably tied for first place with Atlanta. If you go through Atlanta, rush hour traffic on those interstates. Ooh, man, that is a challenge. So if you want to brush up on your skills, get down to Tampa and drive around. You'll be ready for anything after that. Then, of course, we'll be down in Kokomo seeing that uh, turquoise water and that sugar white sand with our toes in the sand and a cocktail in our hand. Well, folks, thanks for coming by. I hope you... Uh, Join us if you see me on I-10, give me a honk. I'll probably take the I-10 over to 75 and straight down to Tampa. We'll hit the beach highway from uh, Pascagoula over into Panama City. 
we'll hit that beaches those are beautiful uh, Destin Fort Walton Panama City Beach probably the whitest cleanest sand you ever saw with that turquoise water I don't know any beaches anywhere in the country are, are like those uh, Northwest Florida beaches so uh, we'll get down there and I think we're going to take a little trip over to Miami we're going to hit some of the discos and hang out there along South Beach and up there in Fort Lauderdale and then we'll cruise back uh, probably through the center of the state I like that out there uh, the the middle of the state of Florida is, oh it's quiet and calm and it's kind of tractor supply country you know it, it, it's not busy like those those fancy shorelines so anyways we're getting out of here J January 4th hitting the road Florida here we come see ya